I know it's hot here, but I'll miss the weather in Savalon when we're gone. Still, I guess we can always come back. That's the joy of life on the road. I agree, Adele. Hello there, friends, and welcome back to more Bravely Default 2. Last time, we defeated Prince Caster, obtaining the Berserker Asterisk and the Wind Crystal. Though, unfortunately, we were not able to stop him from plummeting to his demise. We also learned of our next de destination being Wizwald, thanks to Annie Hall here spotting a crystal in Wizwald. But we won't be doing any of that today. We will not be visiting Wizwald. How instead, we are going to be completing the remaining side quests here found in Savalon and going to Halcyonia, as there is quite a bit left for us to do there. Starting with this side quest right here. It's so sad, a real tragedy. Book smarts. Young people today have no interest in books, but I cannot get enough. There is always something new to learn. Sadly, I have read all that I possess. Please bring me a nice new book. Borrow a book from the boy who likes reading. That young boy can be found in Halcyonia. We helped him find a book in the abandoned house way back when. We do have a new job in the form of Berserker. However, right now I don't want to cover it. As I have decided, I'm going to dedicate to maxing out the Beastmaster on Seth, and Berserker will be going on him. So, we're not going to be messing with our jobs today. So, we're going to head over to this carriage rider. Actually, hang on. There actually is one other thing I want to do, and that is to head back into the prison of Sabalon. First things first, there is something for us here. If we go up here, there's the treasure chest. We could grab this earlier, but I didn't because it was kind of a serious moment and I didn't want to deviate from things too much. But also... If we move up a bit further, we have a new side quest for us here. Visitors, here in the dungeons, what luck! Might I ask you a favor, friend? Bond of Brothers. I am here due to my legally dubious learnings. My uh, leanings, not learnings. <laughs> Burn the books. My brother, however, is a fine, upstanding citizen and palace guard. I wonder if you might be I might speak with him on my behalf. We get a peace ring for this one. There's also another treasure chest for us. With a nasty surprise, okay. Okay, let's do this. I guess we'll just go ahead and take these guys down real quick. Restless souls. I guess these are people that died here in, in the jail. Half damage da daggers, that's kind of annoying. Uh we'll just go ahead and attack these guys normally. Half damage bows as well. Uh, Alright, we'll do like Blazaga then, I guess. Oh well, they're, they're not even weak to it. Whatever. We'll do it. That works. Almost job level 7 on Thief. Pretty nice. Got ourselves a well-worn Muleta. We've already talked about that. It's the aggro-increasing accessory. But we can also talk to Dramed here. The burden of blame is not Prince Caster's alone. I am equally culpable and must atone accordingly. Dramed is definitely the red herring character of this chapter, as you are expected to think that he is the one working behind Caster's back to you know, work with Bernard and uh, sabotage everything there. But, in fact, he was just kind of a victim of circumstance. I mean, obviously, he still had quite a bit to do with the whole covering up the king's death and whatnot and going along with the entire thing. But, uh, I, I guess, you know, he did eventually, you know, give in to it and gave himself up, which I respect. Talk to this guard here. What? You say that my brother asked you to see how I was. Hmm. But why? He must surely despise me. After all, I turned my back on the family business and chose to serve the realm instead. In doing so, he sank into greater and greater debt until he had no choice but to turn to crime. But no, there is no excuse. The law is the law. Now please, leave me be. You know what? I respect it. I guess we'll just gotta go tell his brother that his brother doesn't want to talk to him. That was a little redundant of me. Hello there, buddy. So, he told you to leave him alone. Understandable, I suppose. Why would he want to hear from the one who brought word of his unforgivable thief of an older brother? It was so different when we were young. He relied upon me, called me incessantly. I should have known better than to disturb him in his newfound place of responsibility. I suppose I simply wish to congratulate him. But it was a foolish idea. The best thing for him is to forget he ever had an older brother. That's sad, man. As a sibling myself, even if uh, even if my sister were to do something really frickin' stupid, I would still want to keep contact with her, of course. 
Hello there, buddy. You again, really? Hmm. My brother said that? There's something I want him to have. Something I've always treasured. Badge of Bravery. Well, I guess we'll go send that back to him. Yeah, this quest is a little frustrating since it's just a bunch of back and forth, but you know what? It's okay, it's not really that annoying. And besides, we have a lot of side quests we're going to be covering today. This is going to be kind of like a mega episode, because there's a lot to see and do in Halcyonia since we even started Chapter 1. And we're going to be seeing all of it, so... Yeah, this is this is a nice little start to it, I guess. Uh, I made him this badge. He was young and weak and crying incessantly about something. And he kept it all these years? <sighs> he never was one to give up on things easily. Or people, for that matter. I must not allow him to give up on me. No, I shall serve out my sentence and return it to him personally. What luck to have met you, friend. You have given me my life back. Please accept my undying thanks. We get ourselves a peace ring. Which I don't think we have just yet. A reassuring ring that soothes the soul. It, it makes you immune to berserk and confusion. That's nice. Alright. Let's head towards Halcyonia. I actually lied. There is one more quest for us here in Savalon. Ugh, I cannot bring myself to go. A fluttery stomach. I have been ordered to rid the underground reservoir of silk moths, but I am allergic to such creatures. Would you be so kind as to go into my place? We get a mithril shield for this. This is very simple. Just kill two silk moths. I'm going to just quickly cut this together, and I'll see you back at that guard. Oh, hey, Adele got level 19 and job level 7. Hey there, buddy. The silk moths are all gone. Friend, you are a life <gasps> Uh, my apologies. Some moth dust must have clung to your clothes. Would you mind keeping your distance? Uh, yeah, sure. Just give me my myth mithril shield. Just toss it, you know? I don't really know if that will come in handy, but hey, we got it anyways. We can also talk to Prince Pollux if we want to, but I will leave that for a later day. Last thing. I pinky promise. I'm gonna get... Mm, we'll get two more ice talismans. We'll see this come to fruition later. Okay, now we go to Halcyonia. Wagons! Enable you to travel quickly from one town you've already visited to another. It's always well worth revisiting the places you've been. You'll have to find new quests and items awaiting you when you arrive. What's more, wagon rides are free, so there's no excuse to not seek out the icon and use one. I don't know why I made that noise. Either way, yeah, fast travel is a thing in this game. You just need to have the wagon icon. Off to Halcyonia. Also, something that we won't be able to see for a while after this point, um, there is the art of each uh, each uh, nation's throne room in the uh, back there that showcases uh, what kingdom you're going to. So there are um, just a few new side quests here. There's also one in the throne room that we'll be grabbing in a second. Ha! So the old boy in Savalon has you running errands for him, does he? Let me guess, he was going on about young people not reading, right? Well, the thing about him is that he might read a lot, but he never remembers a single word. I've lent him books he's read before, and he'll swear blind it's the first time he's seen them. Still, he loves to read regardless, and as long as he's happy, I don't think it's a problem. Alright, something new, is it? Here, this one will probably do. Even if I have lent it to him before, he won't remember. Lightweight Tome. We'll be completing that one probably last. I thought this actually was going to be the young boy that had the uh, scary book, but I was actually mistaken. I forgot that it was a completely new NPC. Let's talk to this old man first. This is no good. No good at all. Gold in the grass. I was taking a gentle stroll when I suddenly sneezed and my gorgeous gold-plated dentures went flying. Could you mow the grass and find them for me? I'm lost without them. You get 1300 peak for this. Pretty good. Let's go and mow Halcyonia's grass. This can be found in a certain patch of grass, I'm assuming. Right over here. There's also uh, a few things that we're going to be doing outside of side quests here. There is a rare monster that I want to go ahead and fight and kill uh, near the uh, side quest dungeon with all the aquatic monsters. Also got a tent right there, nice. I'll be grabbing all of the Halcyonia treasure chests that I can as well. And there is also another rare monster over by the shore here, that axolotl that we took the Kukri from, that I also want to go and fight, though I don't plan on killing that one. I have other plans for that one. 
talk to this old man here. I don't think there's any quest differences from day and night here. Ash Sam, you did it! You're my savior! I really can't survive without them! Oh, there we go, good as new! How about that? Don't I look devastatingly handsome with my sparkling gold-plated dentures in? What's that? I don't look any different. Poof. There's no need to be so biting, that tooth can hurt you know. Hey, my easy 1300 peak. A lot of these side quests are available immediately as soon as you, as soon as you start Chapter 1, but I didn't want to do these because I didn't want to leave Savalon super early. God, this is no good. I need something that will make me talk, make me the talk of the town. I'm planning to have a dress made that will really make me stand out uh, from the crowd. If I just had some rock tail feathers, I'd be the belle of the ball for sure. You gotta go kill some rocks over in the Vale of Sighs for that quest. I guess we'll go ahead and tackle that as well. And I guess while we're at it, we'll go ahead and say hi to those uh, rare monster enemies I'm talking about. The one that I'm looking to actually kill is this bugger over here. Let's go ahead and say hi. Ready, everyone? I'm up. This is Lanon Seath. Let's go ahead and examine you. 13,000 HP, weak to lightning, daggers, and swords. This can be a little difficult of an encounter, but hopefully we don't have any issues. Let's go ahead and boost our defenses. Counter singing ability does do charm. That is frustrating. Thankfully, if things don't go your way, you can just flee the encounter and come back afterwards. We can go into this little dungeon right here to respawn Lanon Sheath. I guess I won't be doing singing abilities because of that stupid charm. Do I actually have any accessories that remove that? I'm sure I do. I do not, actually. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh well, I guess I won't be buffing my team then. That's okay, though. Let's try this again. Let's go into default. Uh, let's default again. Default, default. Lots of defaulting. Get as much BP as we can. There's it using charm normally. Now that we have... Now that we understand each other a little bit, I am going to lower your physical attack power by a little bit. And then, let's see how much Neo Cross Slash does on you. There we go. There we go. Okay, about a thousand damage per Neo Cross Slash. That's not great. But that's why I have uh, Seth here. Let's go ahead and use Invigorate. So next turn, our Mercy Strikes are super duper powerful. Go and default again. And then with Elvis... You're weak to lightning, so let's go ahead and throw some Sundagas at you. And it obviously won't do so much super damage. Oh, I did not pay attention to my MP at all. That's okay, though. Uh, we can then... Uh, hmm. Let's use the Gift of Courage, actually. And give that to Seth. That way, next turn, we can just use a bunch of Mercy Smashes. Uh, in case it actually is about to die, we'll use Flying Heal Drop as our last button. Perfect. 2800 HP. We'll go ahead and top off everyone here and then see if we can finish it off with uh, Seth's turn. Faults. Ooh, Seth got charmed. I should be able to. Where? I have a remedy, but I really would rather not use that. I guess I am using it. And then we can use. We'll use two Mercy Smashes and another Flying Heal Drop. There we go. Rare Monster defeated. And we got a Main Gosh. Another pretty decent dagger, if I, uh, if memory serves. Yeah, uh, 54 Attack Power, 50 Magic Attack. Does lower speed a little bit. Gives a crap lot of aim, though, and a lot of evasion. We have more... If we had more weight, we'd be able to dual wield those, which is nice. Stab and grab is okay. Let me see here. Flame Talisman is increasing my weight by quite a bit. Same as Star Corslet. Maybe I should give her the Duble and then give her the Mangosh? Yeah, that seems all right. There we go. It's a really cool looking weapon, though. Okay, back to Halcyonia. I guess I could go grab those rock feathers real quick. Yeah, we're all fine. Now, I'll be frank. These type of side quests are actually my least favorite in the game, where you have to gra grab enemy drops. 
because they drop from enemies or can be stolen. They're not guaranteed steals or drops. So I will be trying to steal these from the rocks. Um, but there's not a guarantee that that'll be the item I want. Otherwise, you just kind of have to mow down these enemies and hope you get the drop. Ideally, this isn't too bad. Nope. All right. So yeah, you basically have to walk around and just murder murder a bunch of rock enemies and hope that you get the enemy the, the drop that you want. In this case, we need two rock feathers. You are a bro. And hope that we got it. Okay, we got one rock tail feather. That's good. Oh, we need three of them actually. Oh, even worse. Uh, I try to just uh fight enemies that are actually rocks. No rock feathers there. We got a job level up. It looks like. Yeah, Seth, job level 11, learned Beast Whisperer. Roughly 30% chance of capturing defeated monsters. I want that on him ASAP. Because that means that we can just naturally gain them uh, without any issue. Let's put that... Let's let's replace Lunar Powered with Beast Whisperer for right now. There we go. We want Raw Power since he's going to be braving a lot right now and doing quite a bit of damage. I mean, Raw Power helped us beat the crap out of Caster in previous episode. It was insane how much damage we were doing. Oh, got something there. I think it was a potion. Oh no, we captured him. We got we we stole the rock. There we go. For some reason, I thought that was like uh, an auto capture. I was like, I don't have that ability just yet. Completely forgetting what I just equipped on Seth. Give me the stupid feathers already. Hey, there's another one. And Adele got job level eight on uh, Thief. It looks like, right? Yeah, job level eight. That gives her mug. That'll be nice. Yeah, she's already one level away from getting Godspeed Strike, one of the most overpowered abilities in this game. It's really easy to get. And yeah, she's she's at job level 9 already. We got this job like two episodes ago. I know I used a large JP orb on her, which boosted her to 5, but still, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I've talked a lot of positivity about Bravely Default 2, and I do really, really like this game, but these types of side quests are not my favorite. As an average, as an avid wizard 101 player back in my heyday, these types of quests piss me off to no end. I can't even find a stupid rock to even have a chance of getting the stupid item. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a uh, monster treat to increase my chances of fighting even more rocks, so... I just kind of have to play with what I got. Hey, there it is. Finally, I was here for like 10 minutes. Holy crap, actually. Uh, insane. All right, well, back to that woman who likes feathers and wants to make a dress. Hello there, lady. Oh, they're perfect. They're brighter and more beautiful than I'd ever even hoped. They'll make for a truly head-turning gown. This better be the best gown in the freaking world, dude, or else I'll be pissed. I've heard of an absolute miracle worker somewhere in Savalon. Seek him out and ask him to get started. Yep, we do have to go back to Savalon. Uh, so this quest will be shelved for a little bit. Shadow Reaper uh, 0812. Shadow. Shadow. Interesting. I'm going to go ahead and heal up real quick. And now I'm going to do something that is honestly pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and outfit Adele to have two Ice Talismans, making her completely immune to water damage. And then I'm going to head out towards this stupid Axolotl. I'm also going to go ahead and make sure Gloria has two Ice Talismans equipped as well. Who else has one? There we go. I want to make sure they're both immune to water damage in its entirety. Because I want to walk out, out to the coast here and find this funny little Axolotl. Now, before you do what I'm about to do, I would suggest you save, just so you don't have to keep walking back to Halcyonia. There is a very, very nice item that this Axolotl has that I really, really want. Thankfully, you don't have to kill him to get it, but it is a drop that is pretty rare. So, we're going to be looking for it. By just stealing constantly, and hopefully it works out. Mm, okay. I mean, if you're curious, this is the, the this Coral Emperor stats. 52,000 HP, weak to thunder, daggers, and bows. When it comes to killing this guy, we'll get around to that later, but for right now, we've got ceiling to do. If you want to, you could also buy even more Ice Talismans and uh, just... and, uh, and bring, bring, like, three thieves into White Mage, and that'll be another easy way of doing this. Uh, actually, I might do that right now, actually. Alrighty, time to start stealing. Thievery! Nope, nothing. Let's try it with Elvis. 
Nothing. Lunar Power is really good for this as well, since it increases uh, your luck. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Well, I guess I'll be going back now. Since, unfortunately, the item we want, you can only steal one item from an enemy. and It'll either be a common or a rare item, and we're looking for the rare item. Hold it right here. So, I spent a better part of about an hour and a half attempting to steal this item from this stupid axolotl. It is very possible to steal this. I have just had horrible, horrible luck. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to whenever I do get the item, but... Personally speaking, I would suggest either you stock up on a bunch of Ice Talismans to kill this stupid thing, to get the item, or have a chance of getting the item, or save it for a little little while down the road, whenever we're a bit stronger and you can take this thing down easily and don't need to spend 10 minutes whittling down its 58,000 HP pool. Either way, back to the video. Okay, this was sort of a meme pick, but I've actually wielded him down to 7,000 HP by just uh, being fully immune to his water-based attacks and just kind of healing off any extra damage he throws at me right, while just good. spamming Body Slam with two heavy <laughs> armored vanguards. I've been able to whittle him down pretty low. I really hope this isn't the way that I get this item as it's still a rare drop and therefore it's still not guaranteed that I'll get it. But we've been able to minimize a lot of the damage he's done to us so far. As you can see, we don't do too much damage, but usually it's enough to do, you know, bring him down fairly low. Even if I'm not proud of how we're doing this. Alright, yeah, 330 JP, lots of EXP. Please, please. Oh, I got it. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, the Ice Brand Sword. I guess I'm, uh, I guess I'm keeping it uh, this way. Alright, um, not what I intended to do, but hey, the Ice Brand is a very powerful sword. 90 attack power, plus 62 MP, plus 82 magic attack. Has a lot of extra aim, pretty high critical chance as well. Though it is a very heavy sword, like, holy crap. Like, we can put it on like this, but it's still super freaking heavy, man. It's a really cool looking sword. This is a sword that you cannot get for a long while. I mean, I was gonna say that you can easily get it by just stealing it off of this stupid Coral Emperor, but yeah, I mean, again, it's not hard to kill this enemy since you can just, you know, uh, make it to where you're immune to all of his attacks and just heal off any extra damage he does. Since all of it, anything that hits multiple people, you just are completely immune to. And if you're wearing a Mana Robe plus three, two Ice Talismans, you absorb his ice attacks. So, you can even do that if you want to. Either way, I'm gonna go heal up, put everyone back onto the jobs they want, and start shifting things around, because, uh, looks like Gloria, Gloria hit, uh, job level 12, which gives her access to Kiraga, the strongest version of the Cure spell. Okay, with that mess all sorted, that did not go the way I was wanting it to, I'm actually gonna head back to Savalon so I can complete these two quests that we have. Let's see if I can them up here. Book smarts and Bell of the Ball. Let's go complete these, and then I'm gonna come back to Halcyonia for one last quest, and then we'll wrap up for today. I actually am kind of curious. I've been recording for uh, almost two hours now <laughs> for this one video. I am kind of curious to see how much I'll have to cut it up. Right, there we are. Ho oh, ho, so this is the fabulous new volume he has sent to me. Well, it may be somewhat slim, but my eyes know quality when they see it. Yes, just holding it in my hands, I can sense that the most profound truths about life will be revealed within its pages. Alas, being an empty-handed youngster, I fear its secrets, secrets will be beyond you, friend. But whatever your limitations, you succeeded heroically in doing as I asked. Perhaps when I have finished it, I will try to explain its contents to you in simple terms. You cannot wait, yes? Ho ho ho! Just give me my silver glasses, please. You need two pairs of them in order to read those stupid books. Then this guy. Come again? You wish me to make a gown using the tail feathers of a rock? That will be easier said than done, my friend. But I enjoy a challenge. I am not known as the miracle worker of Savalon for nothing. There, my finest piece of work to date. If the person who placed the older order is not pleased with this, I will eat my hat. I'll... <laughs> that is the second time we've heard the I will eat my hat term in like the past three videos. First Elvis, now uh, that... Uh, that uh, 
dressmaker. Is that like a common term used in European countries? I don't know. Never been to Europe. Though, uh, visiting Scotland is a, is a dream of mine. The gown is ready. Show me, show me. It's simply marvelous. Just what I wanted. Everyone at the ball will be green with envy. Thank you so much for all you've done for me. You really are a gem. Nice feather hat for this. I guess she's not going to be wearing that to uh, whatever ceremony she's going to. Okay, the next quest and the final one we'll be doing for today is actually found here in the palace. Given to us by the king himself. Ah, you've arrived just in time. In time for what? I was just about to tell Princess Gloria about my first ever encounter with Sir Sloane. Yes. You'll want to hear the story, too. Sure, if that's okay. Of course it is. Sir Sloan and I first met over half a century ago. A foolish boy that I was, I had stolen out of the castle unaccompanied and become the target of a roving assassin. I would have certainly been killed had Sir Sloan not appeared at just the right moment and saved me from an untimely death. As a token of my gratitude, I invited him to come and stay with me here at the palace. During his time here, he told me countless tales of his travels to far-off lands. I was spellbound. And then there was his swordplay, his sense of honor, his dedication to truth and justice. Truly, we have lost a great man. I have decided I must visit his grave. <sighs> but no. What is it, Your Majesty? I cannot go to his final resting place empty-handed. I must offer a tribute of snow lilies. They held a special significance for my old friend. Alas, they only grow on the shore of a certain lake north of here. A lake inhabited by a vicious monster. You must let me go and fetch some for you, Your Majesty. Oh, but Your Highness, it is far too dangerous for anyone to venture there alone. Uh, no, I shall command a deployment of troops to come... I'll come with you. I mean, it's pretty clear no one's gonna talk you out of going. And besides, I'd like to pay my respects too. I'm gonna need some flowers of my own. Thank you. It seems you are both determined to go. Very well. But I would ask that you take care. You must not take any unnecessary risks, Your Highness. Go and pick some snow lilies. Always by your side. Sir Sloane was very dear to me. I wish to pay tribute to the great man by laying some snow lilies on his grave. Would you kindly go and pick some by the shore of the lake that lies to the north? We get a wind talisman for this. Also, I just realized I didn't go over uh, the fact that I swapped Gloria back over to Bard. And I didn't realize that Gloria and Elvis were actually the same job level for Bard. It's pretty nice. I'll have to think about- I'll have to think of something to give Elvis in the meantime once he's done with Bard. And also I moved Adele back. Seth is almost uh, finished with Beastmaster as well. Afterwards, he'll probably be going on to Berserker. Either way, I believe there is one last treasure chest here in this Halcyonia region that we can access uh, that I haven't gotten just yet, so I will see if I can find that. The treasure in question should be right over here, yes. Grab that sucker. Ow. Wizard's Rod in that treasure chest. We don't really need that anymore, but if you wanted a Wizard's Rod without having to pay for it, that isn't a bad place to get one. I just didn't have that on the mind, and also, I don't memorize every single treasure chest, so that kind of uh, didn't cross my mind initially. Yeah, we're coming back here. Ah, uh, I have good memories of this place, don't you? I'm sure you do. This time around, we actually will be grabbing all the treasure chests we can. So, actually, I want to go back to the entrance so we can start from there. Starting from the entrance, if we just walk around here, there shouldn't be anything immediate that I missed, I don't think? Oh no, I did miss something immediately. My potion! Also, now that we're here with a Beastmaster, I can... <laughs> I mean, I wiped, the, I wiped the, the entire population of these guys out the first time around. Now I can make them my slaves. Perfect. There's another treasure chest right here. Teleport stone. Now we can move up. Actually, hang on. 
Yeah, I think there actually is another treasure chest over here. Oh, I ran into something. I didn't even look at and see what it was. Oh, okay. You walk underneath this bridge right there. Very thin bridge, to be exact. There is another treasure chest. 410p. Moving on up. Oh, excuse me there, buddy. A little rat bit. Don't want to... Don't want to kill anyone that I don't need to. Now we reach the teleport area again. All right, we've gone over this way before. This is very familiar to anyone who has been around here. Grab this treasure chest. Wizard's rod, another one. You can dual wield those if you grab both of those wizard wad, wizard, wizard wad, wizard rod treasure chests. I don't think there's anything else over here. Okay. Well, let's go up to the north. Across this bridge, finally see what's over on this side, since we hadn't done that originally. There's a treasure chest on the other side of these rocks here. Three bomb fragments, I'll take it. It's not, like, super crazy, but you know what? Uh, I'll take what I can get. I mean, this is an early game dungeon, so... It's kind of funny that there are uh, there actually are two side quests that bring you here, and the first one, the enemies are like, uh, oh, hello. Uh... Some, uh, I'm assuming that's a Japanese, Japanese characters. Uh, it, it's funny that the enemies are over, uh, you're kind of like under leveled for the enemies the initial time around. And now you come back at the end of chapter one. Actually, well, this quest is available in the start of chapter one. Um, but you can, you can literally just come back here and just bow these guys down. Technically speaking, if, if my notes are correct, you actually, yeah, you can, you can come do this chapter as early as. Uh, the, the, the second that you see the chapter one cutscene play, you can come back here. Oh, okay. That's why. All right. I actually can't grab these remaining treasure chests because of this tree here. Ooh, that's evil. I actually have to come back here a third time. Okay. Well, that was not on my notes. Uh -huh. That's the first time I actually have forgotten something on my notes instead of just not reading it about it. All right, grab this chest. Magnifying glass. Oh! Um. <clears throat> yes? Well, uh. Yes? What? Uh, never mind. <laughs> There are more pressing matters at hand than Gloria just being wet. Come on, Seth, focus up. We got a frog to kill. I wonder if she's actually afraid of frogs, maybe. Who knows? Either way, let's examine this bucko. This is the Enorma Crag. Okay. 6,864 HP leads to lightning and daggers. Well, that's kind of uh, useful. So, let's see here. I'm thinking that we... He only has 6,800 HP. Let's just go ahead and boost our attack power. Uh, let's do it again. Why not? And then, let's pull up Seth. Uh, let's just see if we can take this guy down on, like, one turn. I'm kind of done just fighting these uh, fighting enemies today. Yeah, he's very dead. Was a piece of cake. I would hope so. And there it is, God Speed Strike. And everyone gained level 20 as well. Perfect. Ah, oh, here we are. I can see how they got their name. They're as white as fresh snow. Well, we have what we came for. Shall we head back to the palace? Snow lilies obtained. Snow lilies are actually really pretty full. Pretty full? Yeah, thanks. Alright, let's head back, shall we? Hello there, King A. Ah, there you are, and in one piece. The monster is gone, and we brought you your snow lilies. You did? Goodness me, I can't thank you enough. We will depart for Sir Sloane's grave right away.
When I close my eyes, it all comes back to me so vividly. I can see the events of half a century ago as if they happened only yesterday. Sir Sloane once told me that he gave snow lilies to his wife on the day that he asked her to marry him. He never mentioned that to me. Hmm. I somewhat doubt that he ever meant to let it slip at all. It was the only time I ever saw him blush. Hard to imagine, no? Hmm. You okay, Gloria? Yes. I was just thinking about what snow lilies are supposed to symbolize. Returning to a loved one. They wouldn't be my first choice for a marriage proposal. Perhaps not, but you must understand, at that time, Sir Sloane's nightly duties often took him away from home for months on end. His beloved, alas, was not physically strong enough to accompany him, and she never would be. Given the circumstances, one can see why he might wish to assure his future wife that though he wandered, he would always come home to her, and assure her it did. She would have waited until the end of time and beyond, certain in her heart of his eventual return. And then, at last, he returned once and for all. And here they lie, together for eternity. Sir Sloane rarely spoke of his wife during our time together. But he did tell me that she had passed away while she was still young, and that they had loved one another very much. Hmm. An understatement. Many's the time I felt envious of their bond. But I had better be getting back. Will you be accompanying me, Your Highness? I think I'll stay a little longer. I understand. I briefly talked about how much I like Sir Sloane as a character before we lost him. And I want to reaffirm that here again. While he is the mentor taken from us too soon trope, there's something about him, whether it's his familial connection to Gloria, or because Seth is sort of supposed to be a stand-in for the player, and Sloane's deep connection with Seth because of their Wind Crystal journey, I don't know. I, I just... He's different from the others, and I've always been devastated to watch him go, defending us from Adam as we flee. Rest well, Sir Sloane. Rest well, Sir Sloane's wife. You've earned it. Lastly, we do have a party chat for us today. Vernon the Lionheart. Tell me a little bit about King Vernon, Gloria. His Majesty, well, for one thing, he is a warrior of great skill, famed for his courage on the battlefield. There was a time a few years ago when a gang of bandits appeared in Halcyonia. He took up his sword and set straight out to face them himself. All thirty of them. Thirty? Uh, Whoa. That's what you look for in a leader, eh? Someone who's not afraid to put their life on the line and lead from the front. I can just imagine it, you know? Old Vernon heading out to save his kingdom single-handed. And I'll bet he'll, he'd do exactly the same if it happened again today. He's not a guy you'd want to mess with. You can tell he's a bit handy, eh? Oh, I can tell, all right. Call it a mercenary's intuition. You learn to, to size people up pretty quickly in this job. Aye, and Sir Sloane must, be, must have seen something in him too, eh? Guess you warrior types can really sniff each other out. It's nice to get some lore and backstory on King Vernon. The monsters left some behind some treasure, which loaded onto the boat. Nice. Well, that's it for today. This was a long episode. I actually had a few other things planned for this episode, but because I have been recording for one hour and 56 minutes, my voice is tired, so I'm going to call it here. We'll save the other things I had planned for today's episode for a later date. Instead, next time on Bravely Default 2, we will be heading back to Savalon and beginning our journey towards Wizwald. So... With that said, I'll see you soon.